morning. Welcome to Radio Friends on Monday, May the 15th. Uh, we have a, a book author on our show. He's an English professor, has been an English professor uh, at uh, Westminster College in Fulton for 40 years. And this is the first time that you've been on Radio Friends and we're not on Pepper and Friends all those years. <laughs> I think you're one of the few people in central Missouri that's not been on one of our programs. Good to have you here, Thank Dave. You. Dave Collins, you have you've written a book. It's called Accidental Activist. Now, what's the full title of the book? The full title is Accidental Activist, Mark Farris, Vic Holmes, and Their Fight for Marriage Equality in Texas. So how did you come about, as, as, as an English professor in, here in central Missouri, how did you come about writing a book like this? Well, you know, people talk about Justice Kennedy's mystery of life passage <laughs> in, in one of his most famous decisions, and that, that's a good question. I like to say this book began back in 1978 when I was a, a very young um, and relatively inexperienced, uh, just barely associate professor at Westminster when I, I walked over to teach my first class of the semester and looked around at the then all-male population in the classroom because Westminster was... Uh, just just a year or so shy of going co-ed at the time. And uh, there was this f young fellow with a shock of red hair who kind of stood out from the rest of the group, you know. And uh, his name turned out to be Mark Farris. Um, as luck would have it, he did not do, um, as so many, as is so often the case, ter so terribly well on that first essay and came to see me. And, you know, we discovered that we had a lot in common. We both liked books and literature. We had both been Boy Scouts and we were both Order of the Arrow. You know, we got to be professor-student friends. And after Mark graduated, he would come back every few years and we would always sit down uh, and, you know, have a meal together or something to that effect or, you know, at least get out and get together and catch up a little bit. When I retired just a few years ago, he was one of the half dozen students or so that... Uh, I, I insisted come to the, you know, uh, the retirement dinner that somebody threw for me. Um, I knew a lot about Mark, you know, and respected him a lot. He was, he won the Cranshaw Scholarship that Westminster has to send students abroad, the first winner of it. Uh, he was clearly an extraordinary student. I knew an awful lot about his life in the Boy Scouts, about his life in Oklahoma, about his aspirations for law school, but I didn't know during his time at Westminster College back in the 70s and early 80s that he was gay. It wasn't until a decade or two later that I found that out. And of course, we've stayed on uh, in touch on Facebook uh, mm -hmm. these days, which uh, is the primary medium of connection, it seems to me, uh, almost. And, you know, back in 2013, uh, I read on Facebook that he and his then partner, Vic Holmes, uh, we're going to file suit against Texas and they did you know and then for a while there was a, a quiet period but then as they came up just before uh, the first trial in the federal district court for the western district of Texas in, in San Antonio uh, all of a sudden Mark's Facebook post changed you know it used to be there was one post about perhaps the, you know, the upcoming struggle with the state of Texas, marriage equality, and five or six posts that would be, you know, his volunteer activities, his photography, something mm -hmm. about the trips he and Vic were taking. But all of a sudden the ratio flipped around and I knew something was happening. So I sent him, um, again, as I, as I did when I first learned about the suit, I sent him, a, again, congratulations on his courage, you know, for taking on Texas, I mean, of all places. And uh, I, I had to add that English teacher line, you know, uh, I hope you're keeping a journal. This is going to make a great book. And within, an, within a, a few minutes, I think, I got a, a message back that said, can I call you? Sure, I said. Well, he called and he said, why don't you do the book? I had recently retired. Um, I had another project in hand. So I, I agreed to fly down to Texas and talk with him and Vic over the weekend and get more of the story. I did that, sat with them most of Saturday, most of Sunday, listened to the story, and it was one of the most compelling stories I've ever heard. I had to do the book. So, so that's I, when I you started decided, writing. That's when you decided to write the book. That's correct. The book, how did the book end? The book ends 
in the best of all possible ways with the marriage theirs in November of 2015. It was, uh, you know, it was one of those things where I, I, I would talk in writing the book with Mark and Vic and email them almost daily. And, uh, you know, as they first started talking about the wedding after the Obergefell decision, uh, there were, you know, I, I said, you know, the average wedding is, uh, they send out about 180 invitations and maybe 140 people come. And he said, yeah, that, that's where we're headed. But then, you know, they had become not so minor celebrities in Texas by that point. And everybody seemed to be assuming they, they would be invited, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the guest list grew and grew and grew until they sent out 400 invitations. Now, this book is, is a documentation of this struggle it until is. the happy ending. It is, with a very happy ending. Yeah. It took you then, how many years to write it? Three, three years? Three and no, a half years? No, it, it took about uh, a year and a half uh, to write it. And then, of course, you know, you start working with the press and you revise uh, and you revise again. And then you get reports from readers and you revise again. And right now it's with the designer, um, although it's already available on Amazon.com for pre-order. So, um, you know, it took about a year and a half to write and another, close to another year. Uh, to get it through the press. But it is available right now. It is. You can go on Amazon.com and order it this afternoon. Why should someone listening to us want to read this story? Tell me that. Because it's a compelling human story about two good human beings who were denied a basic human right, somehow summoned up the courage to fight for it, and then got engaged in what turned out to be a two-year struggle. I don't think Mark, nor Vic, nor I had any idea when they started this, this, this fight for marriage equality in Texas how long it was going to take. You know, they won um, in February 2014 in the federal district court. Uh, the case stalled for almost a year until January of 2015 when they went to the Fifth Circuit Court in New Orleans, uh, it was clear from the, the way the justices questioned the lawyers that they were going to win. But the next week, the court declared cert, uh, granted cert in Obergefell, and the Fifth Circuit never ruled until yeah. after the ruling in Obergefell. All right. It's so, called a Accidental Activist, and it's available on Amazon.com right now. should be uh, later at all major bookstores, right? It should be. All right. Please. Dave Collins, thank you so much for coming by. Thank you for having and me on. It's a compelling, interesting story. I Heartfelt so. story also. Uh, tomorrow, Voluntary Action Center and Central Latino. Drop me an email, something you'd like to hear or see. Pepper P, Missouri.edu. Bye-bye.